Hey, welcome to Phaser Tech. Today I'll be talking about Endeavor OS, which is one of my favorite Linux distros. It's based on Arch, and it provides an easy installation process, allowing users to choose from a variety of desktop environments. Its package manager also makes installing and updating software extremely easy. And most importantly, you'll be able to tell everyone you chat with, I use Arch by the way. Now, before I go into the installation guide and show how to use the package manager, among some other tips I'll be showing, let's first talk about why you'd want to use an Arch-based distro, and also talk about the cases where you wouldn't want to use one. Basically, the main advantage of using an Arch distro is that you get access to the latest software and the latest Linux kernel. This translates to better performance and generally better security. So if you're a power user who demands the best performance out of their system, you'll probably want to go with an Arch-based distro. There are a few other alternatives to Arch if you're a power user looking for a cutting-edge distro, such as Fedora and OpenSUSE. However, their package managers are much different, and personally I prefer Arch's Pac-Man. Also, there are several other distros based on Arch, the most popular one being Manjaro. But I feel Endeavor OS is the better choice because it's closer to vanilla Arch and it doesn't hold back certain packages like Manjaro does. So now you might be wondering, why wouldn't someone want to use a cutting edge distro such as Arch? Well the answer is reliability. Using the latest software also means dealing with the latest bugs. So if you're planning to run a server or need a mission critical system where there's no time to manually fix something in the event of a bug, then you'd probably want to go with another distro such as Debian or Ubuntu server. Personally speaking, I've rarely encountered that many bugs using an Arch-based distro, and I think it's a problem that's widely exaggerated. So now that's out of the way, let's finally jump into the guide. So first we'll go to our browser and search for Endeavor OS, and then click on the download section. Click latest release and scroll all the way down to select the download location. You can download the ISO directly or also through torrents. Once the download is finished, I recommend using Etcher or a similar app to write the ISO image to a flash drive. Now reboot your system and your flash drive should boot up and display this. If your system has an NVIDIA graphics card, go ahead and select the second option. If not, select the first option. Providing an image with NVIDIA drivers is a nice addition that most distros don't provide, meaning you won't need to manually install the NVIDIA drivers later with this distro. Now if you see this message asking about the Ethernet card, go ahead and select the default option. Now you'll see this window pop up. Go ahead and select Start the Installer. If you have internet connection, I recommend selecting the online method, which will give you access to your preferred desktop environment. If you choose offline, you'll be stuck with the default XFCE desktop. First select your language and press next. Then select your region and continue. Now select your preferred keyboard setup and click next. On this screen, the first thing you'll need to do is select the disk which you'll be installing to. If you already have an operating system on the selected disk, and you want to keep it so you can dual boot from a single drive, you can select this option, Install Alongside. But in most cases, you'll probably want to erase the selected disk and use the entire thing for the new operating system. So I'll select Erase Disk. If your system has a large amount of RAM, for example 64 gigs or more, then you can get away safely with no swap. But for most people, I recommend that you add a swap. So I'll select swap to file since that's the easiest option, if you don't need hibernation. Also, most people will want to select ext4 as their file system. Unless you're an advanced user who can take advantage of the other file systems. Now click next and you'll be able to select your desired desktop environment. My personal favorite is KDE Plasma, so I'll be selecting this one, but feel free to try others if you're curious to see what they look like. 
Also, I'm planning to do another video soon that will explore some of the features and customizations in KDE Plasma. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that. Now we'll be given the option to install some additional packages. For most people, the default selection will be fine. The only thing I want to point out is if you have an HP printer, you'll want to select that box. On the next screen, go ahead and type your username and select your password. Then click next and we're finally ready to install. So click install now. This might take a while to finish, but once it's done, go ahead and select restart now to finish. After it reboots, log in and you'll be presented with this screen. The first thing we'll do is update the mirrors. So select this first option and choose which location is closest to you. You can select more than one if you want. Click OK and it will run some tests. Once it's done, click Save and it will ask for your password. There's nothing more we need to do with this screen, so I'm going to select Don't Show Me Anymore. The desktop layout is sort of similar to Windows. If you want to search for a particular app or access the settings, click the button in the bottom left corner. This is where you can shut down and restart the system as well. But as an example, let's say you wanted to change the display settings. Simply type display and click it. We can go back from here to access other appearance settings too. For example, if you prefer a dark desktop, you can switch to it here. Now let's go back from here and access workspace behavior. I recommend changing a setting here in general behavior. By default, files and folders will open from a single click rather than a double click. To change this to the traditional double click, simply change this setting from opens them to selects them. A few other settings I would change are the automatic lock screen time, which I keep disabled. Also, check out the energy settings to prevent your monitor from going to sleep too quickly. I encourage you to explore the other settings as well to customize your experience. Again, if you want to access the general settings menu, simply go to the bottom left corner and search for it there. Now I'll show how to use the package manager to install software and keep your system updated. To do this, we'll open up the terminal. The built-in one on this desktop is called console spelled with a K. Also for apps that you plan to use frequently, go ahead and pin them to the task manager by right clicking the icon and selecting pin. Now let's use Google to search for the exact name of the packages we want. Firefox comes preloaded so let's use that for now. What I usually do is just type in the name of the software I'm looking for followed by the word arch. Click the result that comes from archlinux.org. Take note of how the package is spelled, but leave out the version number. This is the spelling you'll use when installing it. Now go to console and type yay-s obs-studio. Arch uses the Pac-Man package manager. However, Endeavor OS comes preloaded with yay, which is a wrapper for Pac-Man that makes it even easier to use. Take note of the uppercase S in this command. This is what you'll use when installing new software. Now type your password and then you'll be prompted with info about the package and its dependencies that will also be installed. Type Y and enter to confirm. And it should be done installing before you know it. To open it, simply search for it in the taskbar like we did before with the settings and then click it. And there it is. Ob Studio is running without a hitch. Now let's install another useful piece of software. Let's install LibreOffice. I'll search for it in Google as before, but this time you'll notice there's a page for it in the Arch Wiki, so let's check that out. The Arch Wiki contains a lot of good information about Linux and various software, but right now let's look at the installation section for LibreOffice. You'll notice there's two packages you can install. There's LibreOffice Still and LibreOffice Fresh. The Still version is older and is the same version you might find on Ubuntu or Debian, while the Fresh version is the latest software. For most software, I typically go for the Fresh version, so let's do that. Go to Terminal and type yay-s LibreOffice-fresh and y to confirm. 
Once it's done, let's open it. And there it is, working just great. Now quickly I'll show how to uninstall and remove the software in case you ever wanted to do that. It's just like the command when installing it, but instead of including the dash s tag, simply use the dash r tag. Now confirm. So that's how you would uninstall software. Now before I wrap up the video, let's quickly look at how to update the software and the system. If you've used Ubuntu before, then you probably know updating involves two commands. sudo apt update, followed by sudo apt upgrade. In Endeavor OS, it couldn't be any easier. All you need to do is type in yay. That's it. It's really that easy. Yay! We're updating the software! Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow, and also to get notified when new videos come out. I'll be focusing more on Linux in my future videos, and we'll also be doing tutorials on Raspberry Pis and Python programming. So if you're interested in learning these things, please stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.